desiblitz.com. Yeah, it was a, a really interesting workshop. They're an um, interesting bunch. I think when we first started, they kind of they weren't struggling to get their head around the idea of using an emotion to let kind of lead your story along to create your character. But I had to do a bit of explaining, and then once they got into it, they were fantastic. So I think it was a it was a very organic thing. I didn't have a presentation or anything. We had a lot of discussion, um, and it went really well. They seemed to enjoy it. Hi, I'm Josie. Uh, I attended Barley's workshop this morning on character and motivation. I uh, found it a really useful workshop in terms of um, um, really exploring the structure of stories and the importance of characters to carry you through from start to finish and that notion of um, how you can start something, get lost in the middle and uh, lose your own motivation with the story because you haven't really um, engaged with the backstory of the characters and why they're um, doing what they're doing in your uh, novel, short story or whatever it is. I think it gave them an insight into what I actually do. So, and I'm, I'm not just me, a lot of authors, I think it's very, uh, for me, the best way to teach a creative writing lesson or class um, is to show uh, writers what I actually do. So I think they got an insight into how I use emotion or motivation to build characters and also to build story arcs. Um, and it helps them to look at planning a story from a slightly different way. And all of them said at the end that they, it given them a viewpoint that they hadn't really necessarily thought about before. So, which is important, I think. Um, for me, for me, it helped particularly at the end and reading out my own um, writing. Uh, Bali made the point, which I'd heard several times, but I suppose he managed to hit it home more, uh, how important it is to read it aloud, to um, um, edit it in response to that readout um, and just get the feel for the words uh, in, in, in your own mouth, verbally in the room and see, see if it works to test the test the air really there's i think there's a couple of things over the years that i've i've been discussing this for nearly 20 years now i think one of them is that people don't feel it's for them so there's no it's changing uh, you know, there are people beginning to write but it's never been seen as a kind of traditional kind of sphere professional sphere for educated british asian people to go into particularly so it's not the classic doctor lawyer pharmacy route, whatever um, and secondly it's incredibly difficult to get in and we're in an industry where the underrepresentation of BAME communities is massive in TV, in film, in publishing, theatre, you name I think sometimes the issue is, because I found you on Eventbrite, I think sometimes the issue is a lot of the, these workshops take place in London or elsewhere and they are quite expensive. So I think to hit the market where they're supported by um, funding or larger organisations, you've got that sense that it's uh, reputable um, workshop but it's also um, a value for money. So we're fighting against the glass ceiling um, and I believe that anybody that doesn't see that isn't looking hard enough because we've been I've been at the forefront of in children's and why publishing four different um, kind of go rounds with diversity becoming a hot topic so four in 20 years you know literally every five years it becomes a hot topic again there's lots of talk there's a few little moves, lots of talk, and then everything goes back to square one. And as some researchers found out recently, uh, the latest study of BAME characters, less than 1%. You know, and then you wonder why certain lives and certain communities and certain cultural aspects of British life are not understood or badly misunderstood or lied about. Um, it's because those voices aren't heard. So it's, I think the situation is, pretty disgusting um, and I think that stops a lot of people getting in as well because they think well they're not publishing people like me so why would I even try so how do you encourage young people and even adults to really go for something and what is a very difficult industry to break into in the first place it involves having to work really hard outside of your actual job in order to get something finished to get it ahead um, so the barriers become too great and I think that's one of the reasons why and that's what I love about this is that the people in that room um, are here and hopefully some of those barriers come down because at least the process becomes a little bit easier for them to get into.
Yeah, different, because um, I've been on the other end of workshops and training sessions, you know, from university days to work, working days briefly when I had a, a normal job. Um, so um, it's strange because um, it makes you reflect on your own career as well. And you think, yeah, how did it all happen? And how things kind of panned out to be the way they are and how different sh jobs lead to different shows and things like that. And then I actually found it quite, ex I'm excited for them because I'm like, ah, oh, you guys are just starting out. And there's a, there's a fun, there's a, there's a sense of excitement about people that are just starting out because you've got nothing to lose. Just go for it. I'm in a weird spot right now where I've done a bit of work and I'm a bit known in the industry. So I can kind of mess that up if I don't pick the right career path. And now it, it kind of becomes a bit more niche as to where I'm going to go or how I'm going to go. But to them, I'm like, just give it a go. Just give everything a go and enjoy it. I find it really interactive and, and all the information that you'd possibly need as an introduction, the content was just truly amazing. Uh, the delivery, being interactive with Tommy and Sandy really did help and give a hands-on approach to what is possibly what you're going to be exposed to out in the world. And it was really thought-provoking, like I came out, came here really open-minded and I feel like there's actually some sort of direction that I could follow. So yeah, it was really helpful as well. The main takeaways, um, be authentic, be yourself. Don't try and be another presenter. Um, just be who you are. And um, don't take no for answer. <laughs> Keep trying and um, be persistent with um, contacting people and, and just being yourself. That's one of the main things. I think maybe even, even from my own point, I thought about hanging it all up at one point I thought I oh, forget it I don't want to be in this game anymore and it's just because it's so inconsistent I, th I think that might be something about it it's so pot luck it really is and it is luck to some extent it's about trying hard and sticking with it but ultimately you need a bit of luck and um, I think there's a lack of people from our community because people want a sh you know a surefire career people want to know you know I need to earn I need to pay bills I want to progress my life um, and that's drilled into us kind of culturally as well. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with wanting a better life and wanting money and, and all those things, and wanting successes. But, but ultimately you think there are some people out there, and this is what I, what I don't like, is there's some people that are, are so funny or so talented or, or so creative, but they've just chosen to work in a different field because they don't think they could actually turn that into their dream job or earn the money they would get in a normal job off the back of it. So. Yeah, I think we're not dreamers. You know, people from ethnic backgrounds tend not to dream so much. I suppose maybe something written into our DNA or something as part of history. But we need to probably just dream that and focus on a dream that's alternative to what's maybe told to us by older generations. The fact that the support networks are there had to be used, not. But something like this that we've had today really helps bridge it up and to actually see that there are talented people out there and they have got the avenues. They just got to put the hard work in, which is something that was mentioned in this introduction, that the hard work has to be put in and there are just rewards. If I can do it, anyone can, because I don't come from any kind of specific background in it. I don't have a certain amount of contacts in it. And, and also the fact that opportunities come from putting yourself out there and you know you may not have the career you set out to make for yourself but something will happen right? I, I wasn't ever meant for radio ever um, but it just happened it was like things just kept kind of pushing you that way and voiceover and things in studios and then before you know it your voice is my work now rather than you know more so than TV um, but then the TV stuff comes at the back of it so I, I want them to know that if you are just committed to it, and if you kind of believe in yourself, and if you are passionate about something, then just give it a go, and keep giving it a go, because that consistency of persistency is, will get you there in the end.